just as the prophecy foretold, I have returned to bestow upon you episode 42 of the Doofy Doo Talk Through of Sheeran the Wanderer. Well, I'm back from vacation and back in Skrull Cave on floor one. Look at how grotesquely overleveled I am. Level 13. <laughs> I'm going to put on the trap armband and pick up a few of these more useful traps. In case you're wondering, I did not run away on vacation because I died in Bufu's cave. I like Sheeran, but I'm not that obsessed. I had this vacation planned for a long time. But it turned out to be a uh, fortuitous timing because the theme of my vacation seemed to be loss, uh, although that wasn't intentional. I went to Boston, I visited MIT, which is uh, was my first choice of college to get into, but I did not get into it. Ended up going to Berkeley, which I loved, so it was actually... It seemed to be a loss, but it turned out to be uh, a great opportunity for me. I also went to the Institute of Contemporary Art, and I saw this amazing exhibit called The Visitors. And uh, the theme of that was lost. I won't go into the exhibit, but if, if you get a chance to look at it, it is amazing. I wish every single musical concert I ever went to was set up like this exhibit. And there were a bunch of moments in the vacation where it seemed like I missed out on an opportunity and then something even more amazing came along to take its place. I, I'm not going to talk about my vacation. Anyway, uh, it was a nice segue to the idea of loss in Shirin because uh, in the scope of roguelike deaths, that death in Bufus Cave was a tiny little blip. That's, you know, what did I lose? I don't know. 10 episodes, 15 minutes an episode, maybe two and a half, three hours of gameplay. There are roguelikes where if you die, you lose like months and months of gameplay. And uh, it's not really a big deal. Obviously when it's happening, it feels really intense and you're like, oh my gosh, you know, you probably heard it in my voice. I can't believe I did something so dumb. Oh, am I? Hmm, wonder if I can make another Uh, I was looking to see if I had another trap. I could make another Rice Master. That, that's just overkill. I better... Alright, Doofy. You're, you've already made this dungeon almost completely unlosable. <laughs> just take it easy. <laughs> but yeah, in the scope of uh, roguelikes, and even in the scope of this game, that death was not such a big deal. It wasn't a huge loss. But if you're coming to Shira and never having played uh, true roguelikes, the first time you die, even if you just die on like, you know, floor 8 or 9 in uh, the old mines on your way to Table Mountain, it feels like such a tremendous loss because you are conditioned from playing other games to be very materialistic, um, to assume that the reason that you are playing a game is to get equipment, get items, get stuff, and to gain in your level. I mean, if you don't, if you're down to level 1 and all your stuff is gone, feels like, what did I play this game for, you know? It was all for nothing. I need to get it back. Oh, this rice changer, finally. Just trying to get some rice balls here, buddy. Um, and you can hear that. Uh-oh, I better get out of here. You can hear that uh, when people post uh, rescue requests, and they're really early in the game, and they're just distraught, you know? Please help me! I lost my katana plus eight on floor nine. <laughs> you know, you've got to save me. And when you say people that early in Sheeran, you're really doing them a disservice. Because uh, Sheeran is a game uh, above a lot of other games, and this is true of all roguelikes, but I'm concentrating on Sheeran, that really teaches you about not only uh, meaningful losing conditions, but meaningful loss. And that might seem like a uh, notice, putting on the trap armband first thing in a room, step on all the traps holding down B, then I take off the trap armband, I can still see the traps. Again, this is a skill you must get very used to using in all of the later bo bonus dungeons, especially the Ravine of the Dead. You need to ID all the traps because a single trap basically ruins your entire game. <laughs> and you have a trap armband, so why not ID all the traps? Make things easier on yourself. Hey Doofy, why don't you just stand on the trap and trip it? No, it is time for this spring trap salsa. <laughs> I'm level 13 on floor 2. 
But yeah, Shiren is a game that teaches the gamer about meaningful loss. And I don't just mean in a gaming context, I mean meaningful loss in a real life context. And when I get to Phase Final Puzzle, I'm going to be making a lot of comparisons uh, to the process of learning how to do Phase Final Puzzle and just the process of living life for real. Uh, Phase Final Puzzle actually teaches you some real life skills that would help you. Uh, and it might seem like I'm overstepping my bounds by making that comparison. It might seem a little uh, inappropriate, like, oh, how dare you compare loss in a video game for children like Sharon to, you know, losing a loved one or losing something really meaningful in real life. But I think the comparison holds up. Um, it's clearly not as big a deal. This is just a game. But Sharon is one of the few games that actively drives you away. There's always a point when you're playing Sheeran, when you lose something as far as items or uh, a run that means a lot to you. I just commented before I went on vacation to Buttersquid239 who just said, you know, I'm done with Sheeran. I just got killed. I lost a Kaba Reborn plus 99 with a bunch of Mel's. That's the most powerful sword in the game. And uh, I know that feeling. Everyone who plays here, oh my gosh, another monster house. This run is just basically just, it's like a pity run. It's like, oh, poor Doofy, you died in Boofus Cave. Here, have this run that it is impossible to die in. <laughs> have all the experience and items that you could ever desire. But uh, I know that feeling. I have lost Firebrand plus 99 with all melds twice to Trove Bandits. I've lost... A uh, windshield with tons of mels to trove bandits again. Or uh, rice changers. I've had amazing runs in phase final puzzle that just died because of something stupid or dumb. And I've taken really good items like gaze shields into ravine of the dead and and lost them. And you you feel betrayed somehow when that happens. Like this is not fair. It would be almost like playing Legend of Zelda and getting you know, 20 hours in, and then some random monster just destroys the Master Sword. It's like, oh, guess what? The Master Sword is destroyed. It's gone. You can't win the game now. You're going to have to start over. You know, that's the feeling you get the first time you get a really uh, painful death late in a run in Sheer and the Wanderer. And that drives you away from the game. And I, th I think in later sequels, they tried to minimize that. Uh, which makes sense, you know, it doesn't seem to be intuitive that you would want to drive people away from the game you've made. But I think that weakens the design. I think it's a good thing that you're driven away from Sheeran for a while. There are always long periods where I don't play Sheeran and then I come back to it. And you need that time to sort of absorb the loss and go through the <laughs> the five stages of loss. And Roguelikes are one of the few genres where you actually have time to go through all five stages. You know, denial. You're like, no, I can't believe this just happened. I can't believe that rice changer just rice balled my strengthening jar, with, which had like my five best swords in it, and they were all plus 99, and the rice changer just took it away forever. And you're just like, did that just happen? And then there's anger. Usually that anger is directed at yourself. You might have even heard it in my voice. It's like, how, how could I be so dumb? Why, why was I even on the floor with rice changers carrying a strengthening jar? That, that makes no sense. What the hell was I thinking? And you get to bargaining the third stage <laughs> and you think, you know, if only I had done this or I should have used this item or you're thinking of all the ways that you could have changed the outcome. And that includes uh, asking for a rescue attempt, you know, you think, oh, I can still get it. I'm just going to ask for someone to rescue me. And that's part of bargaining. I, I do appreciate that the rescue feature is in there because it does uh, lessen the blow for newbies, but ultimately I I feel like it's a crutch and uh, you need to, at some point in your Sheeran career, leave rescues behind and just play on your own. And depression number four, mm, I would change the name of this. You don't really become depressed, hopefully, playing Sheeran. That would be kind of upsetting. It's only a game. But I would change it to preparation. Stage four is more like in your mind you're preparing. You're thinking, you know what, maybe I should play Sheeran again. It's been a long time. You know, I. You think, sure, I lost all my items, I lost my level, but I know now. Now I know the next time I s feel that feeling, I'm in that situation, I'll remember this loss because it was so devastating. 
and I'll know, you know, don't do this again. And obviously I did not go through this stage correctly or I would remember the feeling of dying to a trap bot or mecharoid. But next time I'm with a trap bot and my health is low, I will remember that because of that loss I had. This episode is getting a little heavy. Let's lighten the mood with a juvenile penis joke. <laughs> I had a friend in college who would always name his Pidgeon Pokemon uh, Hard Cock or Rock Hard Cock. I admit it, I'm a grown man and I still find dick jokes to be amusing. <laughs> but where was I? Oh yeah, the final fifth stage of grief is acceptance. You think, you know what? It's okay, I died, but I learned something. I'm going to play Sheeran again. Later, Sheeran sequels have tried to chop up the gameplay into smaller chunks with cutscenes. I don't really like that. I like Lost to be more meaningful. And uh, Sheeran is a game that drives you away, but it also calls you back. In fact, one of the reasons I structured the talk through this way, showing you every minute instead of just the highlights or just my successes, is because one of the most valuable lessons Sheeran has is a lesson about overcoming loss, going through meaningful loss, dying, losing everything, but learning and coming out on the other side a stronger player. All right, this is a good time to end the episode. Next episode, I will continue to struggle and learn, hopefully not die <laughs> since I'm pretty overleveled, but I will see you all then. Goodbye. Well, if you're still playing, you're the lucky ones because most of us are cursing our ill-fated runs, asking why do I do this for fun, collecting memories of the items we've lost, of the runs that all went wrong. No, it is time for this spring trap salsa.